What's up, outsiders? It's spring in the Northeast, which means it's mud season. Also means it's tick season. In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips for hiking with those nasty ticks and five things you can do after your hike to make sure those buggers don't attach. I'm Mike, and this is Outside Chronicles. I love everything outside. And if you do too, you're gonna to wanna to click that subscribe button. If you find value in this video, be sure to click that like button. My Facebook group has been getting inundated with tick posts. Some of the information is really good, some is a little misguided. There's been so many posts that people are even getting scared to hit the trails. Today, I'm going to use science-based facts from the CDC to dispel some of the misinformation and give you ways to keep yourself safe and tick-free on the trails. All the information in this video is taken from the CDC tick site, which I'll link below in the description. Ticks are nasty creatures. They're parasitic meaning they need a host to survive. They burrow themselves into the host and feed off of their blood. Ticks are also nasty because they carry a bunch of different diseases. In the Northeast, the one that we're most scared about is Lyme disease. Not all ticks carry Lyme disease, however. For example, the American dog tick is not known to carry Lyme disease. The primary culprit and carrier of Lyme disease is the black-legged tick, Ixoides scapularis. Black-legged ticks pick up Lyme disease from their hosts, usually in the larva stage and most commonly from the white-footed mouse, which are natural reservoirs for the Lyme disease bacteria. There's been some pretty cool scientific studies showing the, a relationship between the abundance of acorns to the abundance of white-footed mouse to the abundance of ticks and Lyme disease cases. Ticks can't fly or jump, so they hold on to leaves and grasses by their third and fourth pair of legs. Then they outstretch their first pair of legs, waiting for a host to brush up against them. When we come by, they hop aboard and sometimes they attach right away to our skin. Other times they'll wander around our body looking for a more opportune place to attach like the ears or places where the skin is a little thinner. So now that we know why ticks are bad news and we know how they operate, we can do these five simple things to prevent them from attaching to us and sucking on our blood. Tip number one, wear long pants and long sleeves. This will prevent the tick from finding your skin right away. And since ticks don't jump, but rather climb up your legs, tucking your pants into your socks can help. Tip number two is treat your clothing and gear with permethrin. Permethrin is an insecticide that when dry is safe for humans, but it will kill the insects. There are many different brands of permethrin. I use Sawyer products. They also come in many different applications, from soaking to a hand spray to aerosols. The great thing about permethrin is after it dries, it gets embedded into the fabric and it stays effective even after washing. This particular one says it's effective for six weeks. So this product is odorless and non-staining, so you can spray it on just about anything. I would suggest spraying it on all of your clothes, your shoes, your socks. You can also spray it on your tent, your hammock, uh, your backpack, your hat, pretty much anywhere that's gonna be outside with you, you. You'll create a barrier of defense against the ticks. And if you wanna see how this works, there's a really crazy non-scientific video where a group of guys spray a piece of clothing, one half with permethrin and one half without, and it shows how many ticks go on one side versus the other, and then they move some ticks over to the permethrin side, and you see how they die. It's pretty cool, I'll link it below. So to apply, depending on your application, you just spray evenly across all the surfaces. I suggest paying close attention to your pant cuffs, your neck of your shirt, and your shirt cuffs, because these are the places where ticks can enter uh, underneath your clothes and could possibly attach. Then you just let it fully dry and you're good to go for six weeks or whatever your product directions say. Tip number three is use an EPA registered insect repellent containing either DEET or picaridin. I have this one, Deep Woods Off for ticks and that has 25% DEET. And then there's this also this one here, this one has 15% picaridin made for ticks. What you want to do is now that you've got your gear and your clothing sprayed, spray all the surfaces of your skin. Make sure you get it around your neck and your face and uh, it'll give you that extra barrier protection. So how about your pets? My one dog, Penny, is a tick magnet. We've missed some ticks on her in the past and the poor thing had these 
these giant engorged ticks attached to her skin. The CDC doesn't really give any guidelines for animal products. They say to check with your veterinarian for the best products for your pet and your area. Tip number four, walk in the center of trails. Remember, ticks are opportunistic and can't jump or fly. So if you limit your contact with the margins of the forest, you'll limit brushing against those questing ticks. Tip number five, avoid wooded and brushy areas with high grasses and lots of leaf litter. Select wider trails and do not go bushwhacking during peak tick season. So those are five ticks that you can take advantage of before your hike or during your hike, but what about after your hike? So here's five things that you should do when you get home. Tip number one is check your clothing for ticks. You can use a lint roller, or if you don't have a lint roller, just a piece of duct tape. Just fold it over, put it between your fingers, and pat all the surfaces down of your clothes. This will get any ticks that are wandering around your body that haven't attached yet. The CDC also recommends tumble drying your clothes on high for 10 minutes to kill any creepy crawlies. And if you need to wash your clothes, they suggest to wash on hot water because warm and cold water won't kill ticks. Tip number two is check your gear and your pets. You can use that same lint brush or duct tape method across all of your gear. It also works great to find any ticks that haven't attached to your dog that's kind of wandering around their hair. Tip number three, take a shower within two hours of your activity. This is both for you and for me because you're probably pretty stinky. The shower will help reduce the risk of Lyme disease and other tick-borne diseases. It'll also help you wash off any of those ticks that are wandering around your body that haven't attached yet. It's also a good opportunity to do a tick check, which leads me to tip number four. Check your body and your pets for ticks. The CDC provides these charts as a guide for common places ticks like to burrow. They go to warm and protected areas of your body, such as your armpits, your groin, your ears, your belly button, and your waist. Same goes for your pets. Ticks like places that are protected. So they go between the legs, between their toes, can go even under their eyelids, by their collar, uh, around their ears, and around their tail. Tip number five, if you find a tick burrowing in your skin, remove that bugger immediately. The CDC recommends using fine tip tweezers and to remove it as soon as possible from the surface of your skin. What you do is you pull upwards with a steady, even pressure. You don't want to twist or jerk the tick. This can cause the mouth parts to break off and remain in the skin. If this happens, don't worry. Remove the mouth parts with the tweezers, and if you're unable to do that, just leave it alone and the skin will heal. After removing the tick, thoroughly clean the bite area and your hands with rubbing alcohol and soap and water. Never crush the tick with your fingers. Dispose of the live tick by putting it in alcohol, placing it in a sealed bag or container, wrapping it tightly in tape, or just flushing it down the toilet. The CDC recommends just fine tip tweezers. I've found that these tick keys also work really well, both on me and my pets. Some studies have shown that these are effective, but the fine tip tweezers are still the gold standard for removing ticks. And if you develop a rash or a fever within several weeks of removing the tick, make sure you see your doctor. Be sure to tell your doctor that you had a recent tick bite, where it occurred, and where you most likely acquired that tick. And if you've heard of remedies like painting a tick with nail polish, or using petroleum jelly, or heat to make it detached, these are all old wives' tales and folklore. You shouldn't use this. Your goal is to remove that tick as quickly as possible and not wait for it to detach on its own. Another thing that's kind of come up is, should you get your tick tested for diseases? There are some companies that will test ticks for various diseases. The CDC strongly discourages using the results of these tests in deciding whether you should use antibiotics for a tick bite. The results are unreliable. Laboratories that test ticks sometimes do not meet quality standards used by clinics in hospitals. And positive results can be misleading. Even if a tick contains a germ, it doesn't mean that you've been infected by that germ. Negative results can be misleading. You might have been bitten by something that has the disease and you're thinking you're all in the clear and you actually were infected. So the CDC recommends not getting your ticks tested on your own. Take proper precautions with your doctors. Another common question that's come up is how long does the tick need to be attached to spread its infection? And that depends on the tick 
and the type of disease that it carries, it could be minutes to days. With Lyme disease, the CDC says if you catch it within 36 hours and remove it, you're at very low risk of contracting Lyme disease. So your goal is really to detect and remove that tick as quick as possible. Ticks are out there. They're always gonna be out there. So don't be scared to hike. If you do those five things to prevent ticks from getting on your body, you're gonna be way better off. But inevitably, ticks are gonna get on your body. And if they do, use those other five tips to make sure you check all the areas for ticks, any wandering ticks. And if you do get a tick, be sure to remove it immediately. And your risk of getting Lyme disease will be greatly in reduced. And if you do get a tick bite and you start getting a rash or some symptoms, be sure to check with your doctor. So I hope you liked this video. I hope you found some value. If you did, click that like button. If you want to see other outdoor adventures, gear reviews, how-tos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside.